you know when it's the first of the month do you do the white rabbits thing do you say white rabbits at the first of the month do you wait no and say it? i've never i always say no. it. and i've never been one of those pinch punch no first day of the month can't do it back to me what so hang on so you actually you genuinely just wake up and be like White rabbits, white rabbits, white rabbits. If I know it's the first of the month, if I wake is it three up, times? I only say it once. I've never heard. I don't know if you're supposed okay. to say it three times. But if, if it's the first of the month and I wake up, I constantly try and remember to say white rabbits are the first thing. It's the most stupidest thing. Really? But I try to do it. Like, for example, you know the um, magpie salute? You see a magpie, you're supposed to yeah, salute yeah, yeah. it. I never used to do that. I used to think it's the stupidest thing in the world. My sister kept doing it. And okay. then because she kept doing it, I started doing it for no reason. And now I'm still doing it. If I see a magpie, I have to salute it. Yeah. I, and I, 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 and yeah. I do it and I'm like, what am I doing? This is the most stupidest thing in the world, <laughs> but I will do it. And then if I see loads, I, if I see loads, it's like, oh crap. Da, 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 da. Right. Well, I was just going to say, when I was younger, I remember seeing loads of them, 10 or 12 or whatever. And I was just stood there going, yep, 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 yep. And I told my mum, and she was like, no, you're not meant to salute them all. You just salute once. Oh, okay. But yeah, apparently so. You just salute the once, and that kind of that's a blanket cover for <laughs> I've saluted magpies. Because to be fair, from a distance, you look like a right tall. If someone just, if someone sees you, just yep, 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 yep. Oh, one's flown away. Yep, yep, yep. How about if the how about if one goes out of vision? And it comes back again in vision, and you don't know whether that's a new one. <laughs> I have that moment sometimes to where it. I'm like, do I, do do I put if I if I don't then oh yeah go on then yeah how yeah. about if people take it too seriously and they're like, thank you for protecting our country, <laughs> magpie, magpie. <laughs> I thought you were going to say thank you for giving me money on my music. Protect our magpies, thank you for all your service <laughs> for this country. Uh, but yeah, I have to do white rabbits. I don't know why. I just do. I did this morning. And if I don't, if it's not the first thing I said, I will generally kick myself for a minute. Damn it. Really? I should have said what now, do first. you do it when you're in bed and you just wake up and like, right, right, rabbit. So do you look yourself in the mirror in the bathroom, <laughs> hands on the sink and go, white rabbit. Uh, okay, let's start the day. Let's go. Yeah, no, it is the first. Wake up, lie there, eyes open, white rabbit. So I don't soak myself up and like, come on, come on, white rabbit. And go for it. Maybe you should try that for March. You 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 try it, David, and, let, and let, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you try that one and let me know how you get on. I'll, I'll let you um, know what the results are at the end of March when I'm a multimillionaire. I'll say, Mike, I should have done it. Should have well, done ha- it. how long have you been saying white rabbits? What as in time like, wise? Well, yeah. So if you've been doing it every month, yeah. at what age, roughly, would you say that you started doing it? I probably started doing it in like early 20s. Right. So, I've probably so been let's, say, let's say 10 years. Yeah. Have you won the lottery since? No. Okay. But I've been Just blessed. In, I've been blessed in other ways. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and on that cringy bombshell, it's this week's ADQ, a daft question. It's a podcast, so we try and debate the questions you never thought you needed answering. And on the podcast this week, as always, my good friend, because, just because I can't find, if you think of an analogy this week, just my good friend, Mike Malins. Mike, how That's are you doing? two weeks on the trot now, David. You're did slacking, I, mate. Did I not say last, last week? week. Oh, no. But you know what? I did rehearse someone last week, and I thought did I'd you? done it. So shall right, I do well, it this week? Let's start again. We'll okay. start again. Okay. And let's then start you, again. you crack on. And joining me, as ever, each week, it's the vaccine to my virus. It's Mr. <laughs> Michael Malins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how I feel special. Hi, David. How are you, my friend? I'm okay. How about you? How is another I'm, week? I'm, I'm good. How's another Knackered. week? In lo- yeah. How's another um, week in lockdown? All right. Yeah. Okay. I can see, and I don't know if you're feeling this, but I can see you're struggling haircut wise. Oh yes, I am. It's, it's now getting out. to a point. It's now getting to a point where you you need lockdown to to stop so you can get to the barbers. <laughs> yeah, I think when I should have gone was when um, they started lockdown again. So, but and right. I don't know when they're going to do it. In the first lockdown, Catherine did a haircut for me, and it oh, was right. it was all over the place. So I'm trying to avoid that as best as possible. She keeps suggesting it, and I keep thinking. Maybe let's grow it out. Let's get a man bun on. Let's get a you know you get those footballers with the the um the brush. Uh, in the indeed. Hair. 
So let's go for that. I've never had that before. Let's see if I can pull it off. I'd, I'd actually love a man bun. If I had enough hair and if it was thick enough, I'd love a man bun. So I'm going to try... A ginger man bun yeah. with, some, with a ginger beard. <laughs> I'm going to try and grow that in your honour, Mike. That's what Boom. I'm going to try and do. go for it. And, let one, and then one week w- by week, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see the hair growth on the visual um, YouTube versions, hopefully. Yes. Hopefully. So this is where we're at this week. I'm just trying to plump it up. There we go. Uh, let's see where we get to by the end of this series. Um, okay, so yeah, we've Brilliant. got more. We've got more questions for you. We've got surprise question. We've got a guest question for this series, which you'll have later on. Uh, but firstly, Ooh. let's get correspondence. Is it the Rock? Not yet. No, he's not replied to our tweets, no. Mike. If it didn't work, uh, what I'm going to say now, nearly ten years ago, no, nine years ago, around my wedding, when we kept asking him to yes. be uh, an honorary best man, it's not going to work now. Um, but we live in hope, shall we? We do. Uh, correspondence then, Mike, from last week. What did uh, what do people tune in with? Um, so we got, I got a couple of text messages and mm-hmm. I said to them, I'm sorry, but I need you to go through the proper channels in, in order to be able to discuss this. But to be fair, one of them is pretty decent Yeah. that I'm going to, it's worth reading out. I tried, but... It's worth that is fair. So, In fairness, I had the same issue with my dad. My dad sent me a question via text, and I did. I was about to text him saying, "Sorry, Dad, official channels. I can't <laughs> accept this." But I thought it is my dad. I can't really do that. So, <laughs> um, so lives. lives. I don't know what. I can't remember what is Livesy Bob. I think he is on Instagram. Let's just yeah. say he's Livesy Bob. He sent me an email: lives at gmail dot com. Right, demolition man. Yeah. When I was about thirteen, I got a Christmas present from one of my aunties. Three porcelain shells. No reason behind it. Never explained or brought up again. But it did have Demolition Man in my head when I opened them. <laughs> oh, what, so he's never fi- found unfortunately, out what... Unfortunately, she's now dead. So we can't oh. find out why, um, wh- what the reason behind it. But I, it, I would live I'm in had, hope. That's random. You would really hope that that is Demolition Man wise. Because why would yeah. you give a child, well, a, an early teenager, three porcelain shells? I know it's weird, isn't it? It must he must have referenced it, and she's like, "Oh, I'll remember that. I know what to get him as a present." <laughs> uh, we need to go back. But then, what... has he still got them? And if he has, has he attempted to use them in any kind of fashion? Oh, I haven't asked him. So that's well, he'll it, be listening. He'll be yeah. listening, so he can Instagram us. Yeah, don't not don't, text. Yeah, but don't also give us a visual representation of you using them. By the way, as well. Very true. I don't yeah. want to see that guy's ass. <laughs> Yeah. Even if you put on a story, even if you put on a story, <laughs> it's going to be burnt in my mind. I don't, I don't mind that it's going to be erased off the internet. Do not burn it in my mind. Right. Okay. Liv, let us know about her use of shells. Um, and that, that yeah. So, we, so we've got that. And then we also had um, sticking with the whole toilet seashells thing, Jigger. Mm-hmm. You know, the cough, cough, clear your thoughts for the toilet. Yes. So, very quickly, we put up a poll. Um, of what scenario would be used if you, to clear your throat. And more people said to tell someone to shut up rather than they're in a cubicle and change the subject. Exactly. And I think that's more apt. I think more people would be yeah. like, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> however, remember when we asked any of our female listeners to get in touch and let us know what they do? Yeah. Fay Cox 98 on the old gram mm-hmm. message us saying, I definitely do the clearing of the throat on the toilet thing, but I do it anywhere where I need to subtly make my presence known. Ha ha. Yeah, I think the latter works as well in not a toilet scenario. Yeah. I would say so. But she's, yeah, but she's saying when she's on the toilet. Oh no, but I do do it anywhere. Any, oh yeah, sorry, I yeah. read that wrong. Right, yeah. yeah. So she does it while she's on the toilet. And if she's like, hello. <clears throat> yeah, I think that works. I think that's acceptable. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. Um, but it, I don't get the clear. Like, I wouldn't, if I heard a clearing of the throat, I wouldn't think someone's in my cubicle. <laughs> but we covered that anyway. Um, and then the orange is an orange, but yeah, full orange. Um, we had sky blue underscore boy uh, message just saying that it was troubling him all evening <laughs> of the, the day we dropped the. Uh, the episode, but he did ask, how were any orange items described before, before someone dis- discovered the orange? Okay. Uh, okay. So I've Googled this. Mm-hmm. You'd be pleased to know. 
The word orange derived from Sanskrit word naranja in Asia. It was called a narang. And then after many modifications, it became orange in English. The orange fruit came first, then orange color. The orange fruit's color was known earlier as yellow red or red yellow. Mm, okay. Good so if know. you saw the sun, you'd be like, oh, that's a, a red yellow. Okay. And then they discovered the orange and was like, ah, let's call it an orange. Okay. And that's my correspondence, correspondence. this week. Way. Okay. And not to steal your thunder. Uh, that's not to steal your thunder, Michael. Where do people get in touch if they want to send us their correspondence? They can get in touch via Instagram or Twitter at a daft question, or they can send us an email, a daft question at gmail.com. Lovely job. Correspondence all done for this week. Let's get into question number one. Boys, the made up superheroes that we like to watch on the TV and films and whatnot are the ones that bring us entertainment value. Uh, but the first question I'll ask you this week, Michael, is what am I, Well, I got this from you, so let me try and get this right. Who is the best superhero of all time? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, who's the, who's the best superhero? Um, and when I sent it, I was going to say Batman. Of course you were. It's, um, it's going to be Batman. And you, you think about it, and he for, he has to be the coolest superhero of them all. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when you think about him fighting other superheroes. Superman has to be the best, I think. Mm, okay. I don't think you can, like, you've got a man. So if we break it down, Man of Steel is as strong as anything. Okay. Yeah. So you've got the Hulk who has that power. Yeah. And Thor that's got that power. Right. So Superman's got the powers of Hulk and Thor. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's as fast as lightning. So he's got the power there of Flash. Yeah. Um, and I think Wonder Woman. I think she's quite quick. Um, X-ray vision, which is cyclone. Yeah. X-ray, well, not X-ray vision, not X-ray vision. Sorry, laser beam. Yeah, He's got, yeah. He can do the laser beam. Um, he can swim underwater, I imagine, <laughs> without breathing. Doesn't need to breathe because he's an alien, so he can swim yeah. underwater. So that's Aquaman out the equation. He, he can do everything that Batman can because he's Batman's essentially a, a walking utility belt. Yeah. With a car. And, there just doesn't seem to be any other superhero that can match him. And unless somehow you come across kryptonite, mm-hmm. which means you're going to, a, you're then taking a rocket ship to Krypton to come back with some kryptonite or it's in a museum or whatever the films are saying. I can't see, unfortunately, I can't see anybody beyond Superman. See, I'm going to counter that. Right. With, and I think there is a discrepancy here where Superman could get the upper hand because I was thinking about this and I think who could beat Superman because he's got everything. And like you say, Batman is just, he's a bat shaped metal bit. Uh. But, now, <laughs> he, but if it, now, if we were talking about who's the better alter ego, there's yeah. no one in the world rather than Bruce Wayne, I'd be. What is it? You would want to be Bruce Wayne. Going off, a, going off a slight tangent, isn't Bruce Wayne and Tony Stark essentially the same? kind of version yes. in different comic books. You know, they're, ba- yeah. they're basically oh, yeah, yeah. both multimillionaires who have developed technology to be mm. a superhero. Um, yeah. So, yeah, on the uh, uh, yeah, so I would say the same thing, but on the tangent, I think Ant-Man would win. Ant- Ant-Man could beat Superman. Right, okay. But I think there is a thing where I think man, uh, Superman might win, but hear me out here, right? So you've got Ant-Man can do two things. He can either go very, very small. Yep. Or very, very big. Yep. Which Superman can't do. So he's True. got that, that um, fluidity, as it were. Uh, when he goes really small, he's got the strength of a fully grown person. Okay. So he can, you know, he can hide, he can maneuver about. Now, did you ever hear the theory about how um, Ant-Man could have defeated Thanos quite easily in Endgame? When, Eng- before Endgame came Is out? Is this something about his bum? Yes. So the theory was, and all Ant-Man has to do is go up Thanos' bum, Turns a giant man, rips him apart, and he's yeah. So I was thinking, surely you just apply that same theory to a Superman. Scope Superman's bum, but then if he were then to spend to giant man, would Man of Steel's steely physique just actually prevent him from doing that? And you'd form some kind of weird Superman Ant Man hybrid where Ant Man's kind of half stuck out of mm. Superman. I, I think you, there's there's two issues with that. One, I think yeah, because of his 
body built like armor, I think Ant Man would die if he did that. Yeah, because I, I th- yeah, it just wouldn't happen because he'd get so enclosed into Superman's body. But also, Superman wears a practically a onesie. It's, how how is he going to get up his bum? But then Superman's got to go to the toilet at some point, isn't he? Is it, I don't know. He's he, he's an alien. Does he go mm, to the toilet? That's a good but point. He do, but he does eat and drink. Yes. So does his metabolism work differently where his body consumes it so much that he doesn't need to I don't know what the rules are on Krypton. Well, we need to find out. There must be toilets on Krypton. So (laughs) Do they they use the three shells? uh, (laughs) (laughs) Um, So you... Right. No. Ant-Man's not as good as Superman. I think you should. They should be battled to see what would win, and I think. But then this is another argument, and I can understand the the argument. Your Batman's, your Iron Man's, your Ant Man's, are they superheroes? Again, you take away the multimillionaires' money. Yeah. Then are they? I mean, look, they, they've both physically trained to be able to do things. You see that a lot more later on in the Iron Man films. That he's just a lot more jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And. Um, karate as it were to develop his physique batman especially the ben affleck version just all he has to do is pull a massive tire and yeah. there he is he's ripped if he's had again tear that away like batman has just got like a little batman throwing disc Whoa. you know just that batman is essentially a rich detective yes as much as it pains me and i'll still say that the batman films are the greatest superhero films um and i love batman and no one's ever going to change my mind and I'd prefer him over any other superhero. Yeah. But, yeah, take take his suit away. But are, you, t- are you also saying to me that Batman and Robin, the one with George Clooney and Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze, Uma Thurma as Poison Ivy, is a great film? Yeah, I like him. And I... If you, uh, if you right, give me thanks, choice. everybody, for this week's podcast. <laughs> And if you gave me the choice of watching The Avengers yeah. or Batman and Robin, I'd watch Batman and Robin. Oh, God. What's <laughs> going on? <laughs> I watched it. I watched quite... There was an interesting kind of, kind of documentary a couple of years ago about superhero films, talking about the evolution of them. Mm. Um, and there was a really good comment made that when Batman and Robin came out, it was so critically panned right. um, that there's an argument to say that actually that film did better for the superhero film industry than any superhero film. Really? Because it was that bad, it forced film studios to rethink how they did superhero films. And that is where from, Ah. I think from the first Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire, which was like the first one post that. Yes. um, Well, Fantastic Four when you actually think about it. Yeah, no, the Fantastic Fours. But they, anyway. they, they were basically saying there was a bit of a gap, and then after that, superhero films have only got better from that moment. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I think that it being so bad was actually a good thing. So I will let you have that, Mike. It was probably a, a massive influence on the film industry in different ways. I just, I just love Batman. Yeah, but you know the bat nipples. Yeah, not true. Look, I mean, there's loads of things that you could point point out about it, um, but. But the thing is, I think, certainly with superhero films, I think you get a lot of fans that are so, well, that's not right, that's not right, that's not right, weren't like that in the comic books or whatever, that a lot of them, I'm not saying all of them, because I don't just sit there and watch a film Mm -hmm. and just for what it's worth. Like, I... If you if you don't watch any of the Batman films or read any comics or whatever, and you just sit there and watch Batman and Robin, it's not a shit film. Um, but it's not. It isn't. But if you that that into your comic books and it's like, well, there's no nipples, um, and some of the what was it the bat. Some of the bat things that he can do, like yeah. I remember watching it. I think he had some sort of heat. Doesn't he? Doesn't he also have his own Batman credit card as well in that film? Oh, does he? He does. Yeah. So what, um, we, what we need to see is more um, um, superhero themed credit cards. We need to yeah. see more George Clooney nipples in future Batman films, <laughs> and we're fine. I think. Um, so. But no, I think it's like Superman just kicks ass. Like if 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 you want, if someone said to you, you could be any superhero in the world, 
and you like just and you you know just think about it you go you go do your day-to-day business yeah you go to work and whatever you come back you spend time with your family with Catherine, etc what what is the one superhero that you what powers who would you want to be you see I, i'm going to contradict myself completely that though no, now and i'd probably yeah. still say iron man i want the suit i'm going to be able to fly in that suit and then land and just walk out of it and people would go bloody hell that's badass but would you I just think like, I don't want, I don't want to be work, I, don't, I don't want to be in my pants all day as Superman, or in an all, yeah, but, all in a one right. like, It's not practical, is it, with Superman? No, no. You can also um, constantly see um, everybody's kind of um, X-ray vision and the heart rate. You can hear what they're they're whispering. I think like they like yeah, the kids like, like, out. Mm, but with Iron Man, you just got a badass suit. You can fly anywhere. But then you don't have to keep going back to your house to get the suit. Like if you're Superman, you could. You could just do like you could look through. Oh, is it what's around this corner? Mm, nothing. Let's go around it. Oh, I can't move. I can't open this kind of pickles. Pass it here, girl. Open. Boom. Like you, you could be. Oh, oh, hello. You're you're strong. Yes, I am. And, I, and I get with the 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 um, the red eyes, the the lasers at your eyes. You can easily do manual jobs. What if you get angry with someone and accidentally burn a hole in the head? You're like, oh, crap. Um, Sorry. Just then you move, fly move, away. Move that you body. You fly away and no one sees you again. You live in China. Mike Manley was wanted for multiple deaths this week. Family members. <laughs> we only argued about the grill pan. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to say Iron Man still. I think I'll go for that. I, I want the suit. Okay. Yeah. I know you, you know, we're Marvel and DC, aren't we? You know, it's. Yes. Yeah, yeah, to be fair, yeah. Um, okay, so we're saying for that one, superheroes, who um, is the best? I think Superman. Yeah, he Superman. Prob- he probably edges it slightly, but I think Ant-Man has a chance. It's amazing that the Justice League was three hours long. <laughs> it's going to be... It's the, you just, the new one's going to yeah. be four hours long. Is it going to be the UK, though? Like, I've it, heard nothing about UK. Yeah, this is the issue. Again, we're going a bit geeky here, but um, HBO Max, there's still no release date for the UK for no. that. I would think that they um, will figure something out. They'll make a deal with a yeah, different distributor. Yeah, it'll be Netflix or Amazon or something, surely, yeah, or yeah. Sky. But, um, yeah, again, I like Jack, Zack Snyder's trailers. Will it turn out to be the oh. real thing? That's the, the other thi- issue. The thing is, the actors are probably buzzing for it as well. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, they're you see on the social media and whatever, they're buzzing for this. But there's been so much hype about uh, this cut for years. Yes. Could you imagine if it turns out to be I worse? <laughs> I thought that the other day, you know, the amount of people that were Schneider Cut, Schneider Cut, release the Schneider Cut, it was going on and on and on. It was like, right, okay, we're, we're releasing it. Like, it's got to be shit out this. A, people I, not to be... I don't remember what the film's called. There was a film I saw a few years ago, um, and it was a film about... It was set around the time when um, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace came out. Right, and it was about a group of nerdy Star Wars fans who are desperate to see the Phantom Menace, but one of their friends is critically ill, and they don't think he's going to be alive to see the film when it right. comes out. So they go on this cross-country adventure to George Lucas's ranch to see if they can convince George Lucas to go see the film. Spoiler: mm-hmm. they get there. George Lucas, although not in camera, allows him to see it. So the, this guy goes cool. to see it, doesn't tell his friends what it's like, so he doesn't spoil it right. for them. Anyway, so friends, end of the film dies, but they then go off to the cinema to go see it. And they're pumped about mm. it. And they get to the cinema and they sit down and it's about to start. And then the last line of the film is one of the guys turns around and goes, guys, what if this is really terrible? And it just ends. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. Love that. that film. Anyway, we're going off topic now. Right. Let's get to uh, listener questions, shall we? Right, it's time for listener questions. It's the part of the podcast. You send in your questions, your daft questions. We'll try and answer them as best we can. We're also open for people to have their own questions, to listener questions I hear every week as well. So you want to put that in correspondence as well. Michael, you've been going through the, the socials and the emails. Mm-hmm. What are the listener questions this week? Um, so our first question is on the Twitter from at Tobias Hog 2. Good old The Tobias. second of the Tobias Hogs. The second of the Tobiases. Now, he sent this, bless him, three times, this question, so I feel that we need to answer it. Okay. He, sent, he sent it last week, and we'd, done, we'd gone over the three questions, so I said mm-hmm. we'll answer it next week, and he sent it twice since then, so we're going to answer it. And it, it goes like this. Okay. If you were living Shaun of the Dead, mm-hmm. which of the albums that you own would you keep 
and which would you throw at the zombies? And you have to throw some because shovels and bats aren't an option. No, that's fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Um, it kind of depends. If Catherine wasn't looking, I'd be throwing all the Spice Girls albums at them. Really? Get, get them out of the house straight away. Is she listening? I don't think she is. Okay, we might have got away with that one. Um, <laughs> Until tomorrow. I promise it's albums you've got to keep. And it's one of these kind of scenarios of if there's a zombie apocalypse and you've got to try and survive it for as long as possible, what albums do you want to... And do you ha- then you go for a moral dilemma of not just your favourite albums, albums in general in history that should be stored. Yeah. You know what I mean? So favourite album, I'd probably keep some... I know what you're going to go for. I'm, I'm totally got many albums in my head of what you're keeping. <laughs> Before Okay. We... <laughs> well, I'm, cu- I'm, I'm just going through my Spotify now to see um, which ones. There's, I'm gonna be re- uh, I'd be keeping... What would I be keeping? I'd be keeping um, uh, Demon Days by Gorillaz. It's probably my favourite album. Ah, right, right, okay. I'd probably keep Sgt. Pepper's Beatles. I think you've got to have really? a time. Okay, yeah. Then. I think you've got to have a time's album. Um, and then if the girls are still with me and I've got to keep them quiet, probably the, the Wiggles soundtrack. The Wiggles soundtrack? Yeah. Have you I heard? Can't, no, I can't wait to get involved in, in stuff like this. So you might find when Ivy gets older that you go through phases on Netflix where they get into a certain program. So you have to watch it nonstop okay. and then they get bored. So we go through phases. We went through a Wiggles phase last year who are, right. kind of, they're like a, a, a group, an Australian group who just sing kids songs. Right. Very catchy. In Australia, they're like the Beatles. They are massive in Australia. Um, And it's one of those things where it's not only really catchy, but if you hear it enough times, it gets quite annoying. So luckily, Mm. the girls are out of the Wiggles phase at the minute, although the CD's still in the car. Cool. So Wiggles, just in case, need to keep them quiet in case the zombies are at the door. So those are my three. Michael, we're just on um, We're just on Teletubbies and Baby Club at the minute. Yep. And I, I, I quite, well, me and Lucy will be like, the baby club. The baby, the baby club, club, yeah. yeah the baby we've noticed, club. by the way, and I'll get onto my albums. Um, yeah. We've noticed that some of the credits are filmed around here in Didsbury. Oh, really? Are you going to the, gonna um, try to apply now? The, the bit where she's pushing the pram in the park, that's our park. Um, and the bit where she's waiting for the um, bus, that says Trafford Centre, and mm. that's opposite the park. Uh, okay. And I think there's another bit as well, but I can't, I'm not, Totally convinced. No, we like the baby club. Uh, Mary only likes watching it when um, Giovanni, is it Giovanni? Yes. Is on it. And they know to the toddler club. Have oh, you that, seen that okay, one? Then. I don't know no, whether no, that's no. just we're an eye player. not that advanced yet. But that is, um, that, that's obviously filmed in a lockdown scenario. It's in Giovanni's house. So look out okay, for the then. toddler club for all you parents out there. Is it the same? Is it the same theme tune? The toddler club. I don't club? know. I hope the so. Toddler club, yeah. The toddler club. 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 The toddler Let's club. Come yeah. in. Is it? Let's come in. Da, da, da. The baby club. Hello. The toddler club. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. What are your what are your albums you keeping? Right. Uh, I, it's hard. This. Are we mm. saying we're only keeping three? Then is that what we're going to limit? Let's limit it. Let's limit it to three. Yeah. Is five on right, there? Okay, well, my fi- is five uh, on there? Probably not. Okay. So, uh, probably it's, it's obviously I've got the album, but I don't know about the top three. So my favorite album ever is the um, Strictly Banks album from Plan B. Okay. Love that album. So that's mm-hmm. definitely up there. Um, oh. A bit of Bublé. Maybe, maybe mm-hmm. Bublé. I'm thinking I've got so many Bublé ones. Is um, that the best of Boob? No, I've got a playlist of boobs. <laughs> I've got a playlist of boobs. Um, I've got a playlist of boobly. Um oh, Yeah, right. One of the boobly albums. Yeah. Um, oh. And you've thrown right. the other ones crying. I'm sorry, boobly. I've got to get rid of the others. And I would probably actually. Foo Fighters, great sits. Okay. That's oh, good. no, no. It might be in your honor, Foo Fighters. Okay. Because I really like that one. The rest, I mean, I've got some awful ones, but it's hard because like, I've got Elton John's, which are really, I've got Little Mix. Um, I've got a Nickelback album that I love, Pink. I have also got things like, um, where is it? I saw it the other day. I've got The Weekend, which I'm not a massive fan of. Okay. But I've still got that. Westlife. Um, what, what ones are you easily throwing at the zombies? I think Westlife, definitely. Yeah. Um, I would say... Rag and Bowman, Human. 
Okay. Not, okay. not a huge fan of that. Uh, I've got a Jamie Clum album. That can go. Gym Class Heroes. That can go. Mm-hmm. But there's so many that I'd want to keep. Like even... Okay. The Girls Allowed Greatest Hits. <laughs> I was, I was wondering, where are you going to get to Girls Allowed? Where are you going to get to Girls Allowed? Right, okay. I've got, I've got plenty of Eminem. There we okay. go. There's a lot. Okay, a lot have been thrown at the zombies. A lot. There's a lot. A bit, a bit of Girls Allowed at the zombies. That'll do them. Um, right, next question. Right, next question. Um, t- at Todd Witt on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, on Twitter. What kind of secret site... What kind of secret site would you like to start? Okay. I would like to start a secret society about people talking about we're in a secret society to make people more paranoid. Okay. And when they join you, they go, right, I'm in a secret society. They're like, yeah, great. We just tell each other we're, we're in a yeah. secret society just to really okay. pee them off. And then pee other people off as well that they want to be in it. Do you get any perks? Is there any sort of perks amongst the people that are in a secret society? Um, the, relief of, secret society? the relief of knowing what that conversation was all the time about what the secret okay, society then. was. And you just, oh, Yes. I finally know what that is now. I can get All on right. with life. That's my secret society. What about yours? What would your secret society be? Gingers. <laughs> the secret we, ginger society. The secret ginger society. And we all, we're all together, uh, whether it's Zoom or regional or the Manchester people or the Wolverhampton gingers. <laughs> Different branches. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, you get a membership card and you get 50% off any shop that gingers or any service that gingers provide. Any okay. service that gingers provide. Okay. What services do card? What services do gingers provide? As in, what if there's somebody well, who I mean, is ginger in the shop? We're quite equal. We're quite equal these days, David. So we can do a yeah, range but, of yeah, services. But you, like, you, uh, you, you, you do <laughs> a social media job. Yeah. Us gingers can do a social media job. The way you phrase like, the question. We've come on quite a, quite a way these last few years. <laughs> the way you phrase the question was if there were specific jobs that only gingers could do. And therefore, no, no, those no, are the no, I don't think, I, no, I don't think there is. So if, you, so if a, a ginger guy works in Tesco mm-hmm. and you rock up and like, hey, hey, here's my card, here's my card, and then he'll just do something to make sure I get 50% off. Okay, and so if he gets sacked, he gets sacked. It's... You, you would have to be ginger and go into a shop where there is someone working there who is ginger and that put, that ginger person would have to serve you in order to get the discount. Yes. Okay. But then there could be, you could meet other gingers that are plumbers and they'll give you your card and then... You could quote Gingers are us. But what and if, then they'll give you that 50% off. But if you're in the queue for Tesco, right? And you can see yep. there is a fellow ginger person at the next uh, till serving somebody. You're yep. not in that queue. You're next. So the person now serving you is a non ginger. But you, mm-hmm. how, but you're constantly, hang on a second, I can get 50% off here. How do you. You just let the other person go ahead. But so you, you just turn around and go, that's no, all right. You, you go on. I'm, I'm waiting for that guy. But you're in the other queue and you're locked in that queue. Yeah, well, the person behind me, Well, I wouldn't, though. I'd go in the other queue. I'd make sure I'm in that other queue. Play the game. <laughs> <laughs> you're in a queue. The person serving you is non-ginger, but you know the other person is ginger. You get to the front of the queue. You want to get 50% off. How do you get 50% off without I'd give him, telling... I'd give him or her the special wink. Okay. And they've then got to go to the tail and give 50% off. Yeah. And that person that says, why are you giving him 50% off? Well, that's up to him. He's got to... <laughs> He's got to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. Th- them's the rules. Okay, so we're going for a secret society of secret societies and also a gingers only secret society yeah. with discounts and benefits. Uh, other listener questions, Mike? Um, we've slightly t- stolen this next one from okay. Cage Fighting Pod. Good old Cage Fighting Pod. They tweeted this and I was like, yeah, we're going to steal this, lads. Sorry. <laughs> um they want to know what's the best way to watch a TV series. So do you smash it only one or do you take your time and pace it out? I like to take my time and pace it out just because of circumstances as well. I think if I were to try and okay. watch, I think it depends on the length of the TV series as well. I don't think if there was like a typical American sitcom, 22 episode series, I don't think I could smash through a whole series in one sitting. If you had a day to yourself. Yeah. And... The new series of Big Bang Theory. I was like, think it's something geeky, think it's something geeky. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And all the episodes were available on E4 to watch. And you had the whole day to yourself. Would you watch it? Or would you find other stuff? I think I'd get burnt out by it 
if I tried to. And okay. then I think my then enjoyment of watching it would start to fade. I think you'd have to watch some, have a break, and then go back to it. Really? I think, yeah. And again, because of circumstances with kids, it's not possible for me just to sit down and watch. Oh, you're totally. T- a couple of episodes back to back. Like with films, me and Catherine have to go, I've gone through a massive phase where we have to do them in like two or three sittings. You know, yeah. and like an hour, two hour film, and we have to do them in like three quarter junks, chunks. Mm. So what about you? How, how, how do you feel I, watching I'd, do, I'd love to, I'd love to do it all in one. Mm. Like if you were like, so it's definitely something like a drama or like it's on the edge of your seat, like mm-hmm. Tiger King, let's mm. just say. Yeah, and yeah. at the end of each episode, they always kind of gave you that intrigue of what might happen in the next episode. Mm-hmm. I don't want to wait another week. I want to be able to be like, no, I want to watch that. And, I, and we, like, I'd, I'd love to just sit there and watch 12 full hours, 12 episodes, one hour each of a series and just buying snacks, get your McDonald's order or whatever, and just watch it all. Oh, I, I sense there was a book coming there, though. I'd love to do that. But... Well, I can't. I mean, yeah. I can't. I can't. <laughs> but, but we're talking about in an ideal situation. That's, that, I'd love to do that. Okay. That'd be my choice. Uh, okay. Any other listener questions this week? Um, yes, very, very quickly. Um, at Broken ADG. He's asked us on the Twitter, if you do take a knife to a gunfight, how would you ensure victory? Ooh, I would have a specialist knife that can turn into a gun. <laughs> <laughs> so it oh, looks right. like a knife. What, just knit down to being q or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think they sell them there, don't they? Um, I, it looks like a knife and they're all laughing. And then I just flip a handle and it's actually a gun. And I'm like, ha ha, joke's on you. Yeah. How about you? What would you do? How would you bring a knife to a good fight and still succeed? Well, and I would are, cheat. And are all the other people, 10-year-old children, that you've got to try and <laughs> beat off as well? I, I would. So I imagine it's your typical Western, you walk, 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 turn around, bang. Mm-hmm. I would cheat. I'd walk, walk, turn around, throw, throw the knife in the back of his head, right? And I'd be an expert knife throw, by the way, <laughs> right in the back of his neck, uh, to, well, of his head, Instantly killed, boom, you've won. Okay. So you're che- so yeah. So, so not, not only are you cheating, but you also know that you've got special um, knife throwing skills beforehand. Oh, sorry, says the guy who's got a knife that turns into a gun because everyone's got one of them. Or maybe I'll like, yes, do a... sorry, your, yours is more believable. Yeah. yeah. I'll put my, I'll put my hands up to that. Sorry, David. Okay. That's what we're going to do in a knife. So thanks for all those questions this week, everybody. Um, now it's time for surprise question. It is indeed surprise question. It's a part of the podcast where either myself or Michael will bring a surprise question to the table. We've had no prep for it whatsoever. We say it off the cuff and we see what the answer is. This week, it's my turn to ask Michael the surprise question. Don't worry, Michael, there is no potato waffles involved this week. <laughs> once again, uh, Michael, it's quite a simple question this week for you. As a kid... What object or what thing seemed very posh, but now as an adult is actually quite normal? Oh, seemed posh. Oh, suddenly as a kid, you're like, oh, but minute, that's like, oh, you're fancy if you've got that, or oh, you're, you know, that's quite posh if you, you do that or whatever. And now as an adult, you're like, oh, actually, that's just quite a normal thing. Cutlery? I'm joking. Uh, Cutlery. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sky TV would be one, yeah. which you've mentioned before. Yeah, I think if when growing up, if someone had Sky, you'd be a bit like, "Oh, hello." But it's so you've either got Sky or Virgin. It's quite common. Um, oh, I think Sky is good. I used one. to think. I, I used. To, I remember thinking, and it's it's slightly off topic, but. Oh, when I grow up, when I become an adult, I'm going to have to drink coffee all the time or tea mm. all the time. Yeah. Um, and you don't drink juice anymore because I don't see adults drinking juice. But I have one, maybe two cups of coffee a day, and then it's water or juice yeah, or a fizzy pop or, or beer or alcohol. I, I've, I don't think I've found myself, even at work, I've never just drank coffee or tea no. all the way through, um, which is slightly off topic. But I think, yeah, I think maybe Sky. I think, um, I think Sky Virgin, you know, the cable, that's a good one. I think as a kid, you're like, oh, bum there, yeah. you've got Sky. But I think back then, I think it, 
it was a bit of a higher brow thing, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, I would say. My mum, um, sorry, no, my grandma and granddad had, and I thought this was quite posh, but they also had Sky, so I remember thinking, oh, you've got money. They had like to record t- to record shows on, on your VHS tape player. Yeah, they had like some sort of remote control that you sat on the top of the tape player, right. and on TV guides there used to be a chord at the end of each show and you type that into this little calculator right. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the time it starts the time it ends plunk it on and then it and then that records for you hmm, rather a... than yeah record don't record you know you had to type it in didn't you i think you had to type it in yeah when your tv did this long player short player whatever <laughs> where you was... just type this chord in and it was just yeah. bang it on top that was, was quite posh. it was it was basically sky plus back in the day yeah, that might, I don't know if you. It just reminds me there when we, when we used to buy blank VHS tapes and you yeah, yeah. just you had to either set it to short or long term yeah, yeah. setting. And I used to think, how does that work? It's the same tape inside. I still don't know how it works. <laughs> Do they just slow it down the recording? Well, I would have thought so. Just surely, who who wants to buy? Who wants to record on short? Surely you'd want a maximum amount out of VHS tape. Yeah, and then you just keep recording up past it. Like when I was a kid to try and record uh, wrestling pay per views, <laughs> yeah. What I'd have to, my dad had to do, is get the tiny, the tiny telly out of my room, which had like a, it did have like an inbuilt video player in right. there. Bring it downstairs, plug it into the telly, mm. so the feed would go into that telly. Right. Put the video on long record, and yeah. then he'd have to, he, he could do it and set it to like what. Two o'clock in the morning, would it be? Yeah, yeah, one, yeah. One, two o'clock. So, so it worked. And then as a kid, just to make sure it had worked, because obviously you don't want to know what the results are. Yeah. I'd have to like almost rewind it like five seconds to see the end credit yeah. to make sure it recorded. I think it was once at WrestleMania where I accidentally saw the last bit when you saw someone like holding up the title. And I was like, oh, damn it. Right. I've seen the ending. But yeah, back in the day. I, I remember thinking with, with wrestling, because it used to get advertised Sunday at one o'clock in the morning. I'd be like, Mum, what date do I put in here? Do I put in Sunday's date or Monday's date? And he'd be like, no, you put in Monday's date. It's... Yeah. So do I put the 25th or the 26th? No, you put the 26th, Michael. Are you sure? Yes, Michael, I'm sure. How do you know? Because I'm 30 odd years old and you're 10. Um... Trust me on this. The, the one thing I remember as a kid being like, oh, that's quite posh, which is probably a bit normal now, I would think, is, do you remember, are they called soda streams? Where you All make right. your own things? Yes. As a kid, I always wanted one as a kid. I always think, oh, wow, that's amazing. Make your own pop. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. And now you're a bit like, it is still like, uh, you know. Is it, like yeah, a, is it normalised now to get I, a soda stream? I would hope so, <laughs> unless that's saying something about me. Um, but I love one still. I would love one I, still. I don't know anyone that's got a soda stream. But I would love one still. And I think I'd probably use it for five minutes and be like, oh, I don't need to use yeah. that now. So I'd have made that at the soda stream and we'd love, like, oh, can you make me a Coke? Can you make, can you make me a, a fizzy lemon or whatever? <laughs> okay. A fizzy so, lemon, that's a lemonade, that's a lemonade, Mike. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a bottle of lemonade. No, make it. I want you to make it. Okay, so we're saying what? So if you're... That's I, think Sky, I think Sky or that little recorder thing that my grandparents had on top of video player. Okay, good. Right, that's the prize question done. Right, it's time for guest question. This is a part of the podcast where we bring a guest on into the ADQ family and they come with their own question to ask Gaston. us. Gaston, we've got Gaston, have we? Gaston, is what I said. It sounded like we've got Gaston from, from Beauty and the Beast. Um, on this, no, on, Mike, on the podcast, we've talked about this infamous person called Lee Hasdall, who's been quite we uh, have. Uh, a, a influence into what this podcast is all about. And I'm pleased to say that the man himself, Lee, is joining us via, like everybody else, from his house. Uh, Lee, how are you doing this morning? Not too bad. Not too bad. Surviving lockdown. Thank God it's February now. January's over. <laughs> yeah. And we've got a short, shorter month as well. Way. Oh, yeah. Not that it's a, if you look on the calendars, if you look on your calendars on your phone, it's a perfect like four weeks. So starts on the Monday, ends on the Sunday, and it fills it out completely. Oh, that, that's satisfying to look at, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> perfect symmetry. Uh, right, Lee has thrown so many questions at us uh, since the start of ADQ, and he's I'm sure he's got another cracking one to present today. So, Lee, what is your question for guest question? 
So my question to you guys is, um, do animals make different noises in different languages? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I like that. So I you, like that. Do you get what I'm, what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna ask Mike for this one first, just because he's you might got, do. Yeah. because <laughs> you've got more of the regional accent. <laughs> you, anyway, okay. Um, I think you've got the more nicer regional accent. Let's put it like that. Oh, I've definitely got a nice yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what um, what, what do you think on this one? Do you think you can oh. have horses with a, a Manchester accent? Is that what are we saying? Like UK or worldwide accents? Okay. So no. The question is so worldwide, so... Yeah, right, okay. As an example, we say for a cow, moo. Yeah. And if you're a French, you'd go... Right, me okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're asking if cows go, me in France, uh, along yes. with others. Um, I hope they do. I'd love it if they did. And then it'd be like pick that Peter Kay thing. Where it's like, oh, cabbage finger heads, but instead it's at the animals going, oh, sounds French. It's, it looks like a cow. It is a cow, but it's a French cow. Come and have a listen. Come and have a listen. I'd love it if that was the case. Um, I, but I, I don't know because I don't think I've, I can't remember the last time I went on holiday surrounded by animals. And I guess it's, it's some of it more so, that would, would an animal be able to react to the language of that country because they'd understand it, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, I think that, that They'd have to, wouldn't they? Like if you've got a, if it, yeah, if you've got like a dog trainer or what do they call them? Um, sheep. Oh, what do they call them now? The farmers with the sheep dog. Sheep dogs. A sheep dog. Yeah, there right. we go. A sheep dog. If you've got a farm in another country who's got a sheep dog, and he's saying it in a different, oh, they wouldn't have a language. Clue what you, wouldn't have a clue. That's what I mean. So would they? Would that dog not understand the language of that person? No, because it, I imagine with animals, it's all it's the tone and stuff like that. So if you say, come here, boy, come here, then they just get the tone of that. I'm like, yeah, 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 I'll get a treat or you want a hug. Where if, again, some, some French person, <laughs> it's not really got the same ring to it. And I apologize if there's anyone who's French that listens to this. I'll look at the stats no later and, and that one French <laughs> listener, that is it, um, I am turning off. <laughs> Not back next week. In the yeah. worst French accents possible as well. Oh, it's like a low low this episode. Um, I yeah, I, I don't think they'd understand from another country, but I don't I don't know whether an animal has a different accent, does it? It's not necessarily if they have a different accent, it's um so would for example a French person think it makes a different noise than what an English person was. Uh, right, okay. So, again, yeah. go, going back to the cow, we think it's moo, but they may say what the French version of moo is. Yeah. Is that what you say? Ah. Okay. Okay. But also, yeah, the accent thing. Yeah. <laughs> right, let me... I'm going to Google French, m- moo, moo in French and see what comes up. <laughs> okay. So I, again, I haven't been to France for a while, but I don't remember a cow saying not say moo in another country. Are you ready? All right, go on. Let me see what Google says. Moo. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. Lee, what, what, so what do you think on this, Lee, then? You, okay, you so, must have a, 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 an answer for this one. So when I was living in the Netherlands, um, I was over at a friend's house, and I don't know how we ended up talking about animals, but um, we were talking about, I think it was just like, learning Dutch language, stuff like that. And it came to the point where we were talking about animal noises. And more specifically, he was talking about noises cows make. And we were like, no, it's moo. (laughs) And for Dutch people, they don't go moo, they go boo. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. There's some other examples as well, like um, ducks in Dutch. Um, I'm sorry, that, that ducks are actually the same, but, um, so frogs, what, what sound do you think frogs make in English? Ooh. Ribbit. Yeah, ribbit. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, for Dutch, it's quack, quack. Quack, right. quack. <laughs> quack, quack, yep. Um, in Italian, for frogs, it's cra, cra. 
Um, my mind is blown. <laughs> Going back to cows, the French one, you actually went far off. Well, <laughs> for the spelling of it, it's me. <laughs> okay. uh, Germans just go, no. Uh, Japanese is... Of course Germans just go, no. Of course they do. <laughs> it's, not, it's not elongated or anything. It's straight to the point, no. Japanese is just mau mau. <laughs> what, for a, a cow? Mau mau? For a cow, yeah. Um, pigs, in English, obviously, what, what do you think is English? Oink, oink. oink just a grunt, yeah, isn't in, it? In, yeah. Dutch, in Dutch, it's <sighs> knor, knor. No, no. Yeah, I think I can um, get that though. I think it, I can see it's like a general grunt, isn't it? So I can think that can yeah. vary a bit. Wrenches. So I'd, I'd want to know if these people do those sounds then, if they're referring to the particular animal. So yeah. if, they, if they would, if they would go, no, no, for a pig, or they, do of, they just pronounce it like that and go? <laughs> some of it makes sense, like. I think it was with Dutch. Um, well, for a rooster, you'll go cockle doodle do. Dutch go cockle coo coo coo. <laughs> <laughs> it's more. It'd be interesting more like having that conversation with, like you said about um, who was it with the frog? Was it Dutch people think frogs go quack quack? Yeah. Quark, Just having quark, that conversation quark, with someone. Quark, quark. That, yeah, you have that conversation with someone. Like, hang on a second. You think that's a frog? I yeah. You're talking about a duck all this time. <laughs> I bought, I bought you this duck. That's what I thought you wanted. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, do we know what any other country think the noise of a swan makes? Just just putting it out there. Just curious. Swan noise. And... Let me see if I can find that for you. Lee's doing the work for oh, you. Do you want to do the rest uh, of the show? No, no, <laughs> my, my Googling's not coming up very well. It's not... I don't know. I bet you Google. Sorry, David. I bet you was better in Dutch, wasn't it? This Google, it was faster in Holland. Yeah. <laughs> Just ask them though. What what sound do we actually say that swans make in English? David's the expert. Crack on, David. I think they make. <laughs> um, is it more like a a mixture between a bark and a? Is it more like brah, brah, something like that? <laughs> That's my guess. Scream. It's more of a scream. Right, let's go to Google and double check. Swan noise. Let's see if it comes up. Right, here's a video. Okay. Oh, with an advert for Michael Jordan. Hang on. <laughs> It'll get there. The, every time a, squall, a, a, squall, a swan talks, he, he has to play a Michael Jordan advert first. See? It's just what I said. So a kid screaming from a far distance Sounds away. Sounds like it's in pain. <laughs> <laughs> help, help. I do like the idea that before a swan squawks, it's got to advertise Michael Jordan beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that happens. Technically um, audiobooks, but Michael Jordan just seems <laughs> to be the one that they're trying to plug. Okay, that's great. Okay, Lee, thank you very much for your question. <laughs> uh, thanks to Lee for coming on the podcast for guest thank you, question. Uh, it was good to have um, the voice behind the man we always talk about on this podcast. And Indeed. thank you for being very much an inspiration. I thought he was old, you know. I okay. in my head that he was like a, a wise old man. Okay. But now he's a but wise he's young man. A wise young man. Yeah, so thank you for Lee for coming on. Uh, big inspiration uh, for this podcast. It's time for the last question now. Uh, and Michael, uh, school, school days. Sometimes mm -hmm. we might get hurt at school and mm -hmm. sometimes we might have to go see the nurse or whatnot. But my last question for this podcast to you, Michael, is how is it that a wet paper towel seems to cure all ailments when it comes to school life? I, I don't know. It's the magic paper towels to the point where my mum would be like, Oh, you find put a paper towel on it. It even got to my mum that she she knew of these magic powers that these blue paper towels would do. Um, and now, even now, me and mum, uh, sorry, me and my brother take the mick out of my mum. Like, oh, we'd have a broken arm. She's like, oh, you can go to school, just put a paper, paper towel on it. Um, they, they, I don't, Staples must have a, a magic section yeah. that schools can order from. You've got a graze knee. Oh, just, just, there we go. It's, it's gone now. Look at that. Oh, it's stopped bleeding. I, I don't know, but it's, it's fascinating how well they work. And 
why have we not? Have you got blue paper towels at home? No. Why? No. Did, like, did why you, have we did, not gotten onto this? Did you have blue paper towels? Because I think yeah, I, yeah. I had green paper towels. Okay. As a kid. No, is that have, again? Is that a northern southern thing? We might have actually. I think one school might have had green, and the other might have had blue, or that we might have changed because of cuts or something. I don't know. And again, we've, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Why isn't someone gone? Get a wet paper yeah, towel. You got, well, you, on them. You got corona? Come here. <laughs> I'll sort you out. We've spent millions on track and trace and a vaccine when all we needed was the schools that aren't open at the minute. Like, oh, I've got some surplus paper towels here. Do you, let me just pack your chest. You, you imagine if that, that would, in some weird reality, that was the case after the pandemic's gone and they figure out that wet paper towels sold it. Just don't say anything. Don't say anything. Just put it aside. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm sure... Yeah, the, the government w- would would not admit that anyway. No. <laughs> they'd, um, I'm I pretty would, sure they'd keep it. I wonder, wh- I wonder when uh, wet paper towel started as a thing. Like, it's great psychology to say to someone, oh, yeah, just put wet paper towel. Because a kid will instantly think, oh, yeah, geez, like my, my arm's so much better now. Yeah. Because it must be down how, to resource, surely. You've got, you've got nothing else, have you? Uh, here's a wet paper towel. <laughs> it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> and it caught on. That's maybe where it started from. Mm. So they checked the first aid and they'd run out of plasters and there was no bandages. So they were like, crap, what are we going to do? We need something. I've got some paper towels. Right, yeah. so just say the magic. Wet it and just say it's magic. Really? Yeah, he's, he's five. It'd be fine. And then from there, it just it just went. It just took off. Has a kid never gone? Region by region in the yeah. country. Yeah. Has a kid never gone, miss, my arm's just wet? What are you doing? <laughs> My arm's soaking now. It's not, my arm's... It's done nothing. You've just given me a wet arm now. It's still broken, miss. <laughs> yeah. It's still broken. What What, what do you think is going to happen here? I'll just tie it I'll just tie it for you. Tie it round. You'll see it morning. Did you have anything else like that as a kid at school? Not just wet paper towels, but any like magic solutions. Like, you'd have the magic rub, surely. Or if you play football, you'd have the magic spray. Football, yeah, football, yeah. you get the sponge. Yeah, the magic sponge. Um, and then all things, all things would uh, would be fine. Um, I don't know. Did, my mum might have kissed yeah. my broken arm or something. Um, but I remember. Hell, bloody hell, mum, that's, that's fixed. Like, <laughs> Keep you inside. If people know who you are, they'll do experiments <laughs> on you. I do remember at school, if you fell on the floor and you grazed your knee or whatever... A teacher, dinner lady, always always be like, "Oh, have you damaged my? Have you damaged my my, my pavement? Oh, yeah. Have you made? Have you made? Have you made a dent in my pavement? I hope not. Like, I'm bleeding here, love. <laughs> I don't care about the the playground. Yeah, or kids now where like they hurt, like, oh, was it that chair? Naughty chair, smash yeah. that chair. <laughs> and that chair's like, what? I've done nothing. I've just been sitting here. That just kid went there. into me. What? <laughs> You're going to throw me in tip? I was just doing my job. <laughs> Kids went into me. I love... Sorry, I love that he tried to get a Northern accent in there as well. We've talked about this for years. Every time I'm in conversation with you, I dip into an, a pretend Northern accent. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know what it was, because you kind of said, throw me in tip, and there just wasn't that, that teeth twang yeah. to it. Throw me, in, throw me in tip. Yeah, it's a posh northern accent. Throw me in tip. Throw me in tip. Throw me in tip. That? No? I love going tip. Yeah. I love... I, I've got stuff that I need to go. I love going tip. I can't wait to take Ivy. <laughs> Come here. Let me show you this magical world of the tip. Oh. <laughs> and all the... Take all the people day out here. All the Come people in the tip. All the people in the tip break out in song. Da, 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 da. We put glass here. We put plastic over there. It's a glorious. It's, it's a wonderful, beautiful moment. I've been to the tip so many times in the last two or three months because of this house move that it's just like, ugh. yeah. I've got again. I've got a car full of cardboard boxes and that to throw to the tip. And I'm just mm. like, ah, oh, great. I've got to go to the tip again. But one day, I hope to reclaim that <laughs> magic that Ivy will see in her eyes one day when she first visits yeah. the tip. I really hope so. Okay, so wet paper Can't towels. Wait. That wet paper towels. If we've learned anything, they cure everything. Let's bring them back. Hashtag. Bring back wet, pa- wet paper towels. Yeah. If you've got an almond... I'm going to tweet it, David. Yeah. If you've got an almond, put a wet paper towel on and tell us the results. How did you get on? Yes. Did it cure your almond or not? And let's put it um, as a form of medicine on subscription for doctors. 
<laughs> go to the doctors. What's wrong? Just wet paper towel, put it on. Surely it saved the NHS so much money in medicines. So much money. So much money indeed. Uh, and on that wet paper towel bombshell, that's where we'll leave it this <laughs> week. Uh, Michael, if people want to get in touch with the show throughout the week, send us their questions, their correspondence. How do they do it? Listeners, please tweet us or Instagram us at a daft question or email us a daft question at gmail.com. Lovely, lovely. We'll be back next week as always with more completely daft questions. Uh, but for this week, it's bye from Michael. And it's bye from David. It's bye from me. See you next time.